Hi everybody, Dr. Rick here for part two of my vitamin B12 series. In part one, for those of you who saw it, you will remember that we looked at myself and another clinician who both looked at the same patient's lab work, same patient, same blood work, and we had totally different conclusions about their vitamin B12 status. They thought it was an emergency, I thought it was just fine. As it turns out, I have to say it was just fine. Part of what helped with that was the methylmalonic acid test, the functional indicator of B12 status. In today's video, methylmalonic acid is gonna come in handy again. I'm actually gonna go back a number of years to some of my personal and clinical experience with vitamin B12 in myself, where I followed myself through a series of experiments over a number of years, checking B12, methylmalonic acid, as well as another indicator called homocysteine, and I tried spirulina, uh, various green products, chlorella. Um, we're going to talk about supplementation in here. So I, I think you're going to find it very, very enlightening. So here we go. Stay tuned. So going back to the late 1990s, I was recently out of school. I was in practice at True North Health Center, and I had an account with a local lab through True North. It was kind of fun. I could order my own lab work now. And a friend and I decided that we wanted to get some lab work done, including vitamin B12. So I ordered us up some lab work, they came and drew the blood, and we got the results. Now my vitamin, and so what we did here is we checked vitamin B12 and methyl malonic acid, the functional indicator of B12 status. And it's interesting, in reviewing all this lab work, there's an awful lot I could cover. And in some future episodes, I'm gonna talk about other aspects of this lab work to share my personal experience with the raw food diet over the years and what I've learned and, and what I've modified. And you know, it, it's really been extremely valuable in terms of a learning process and helping me modify uh, what I've done. But so back then in the late 1990s, after um, you know never having this checked before, and I have everything on my computer screen right here that's off the screen for you guys, my vitamin B12 was um, above 150 but below 200. That's a bit too low. And then the methylmalonic acid, which this in this case I checked it in the blood, and the reference range is it's supposed to be less than 0.4. You want methylmalonic acid low. That means you're in good B12 status. If methylmalonic acid is too high, B12 status isn't good. So it's supposed to be less than 0.4. My methylmalonic acid level was around three. So that's higher than 0.4, that was too high. Now, here's what I actually wrote. I've got a note in the little PDF. And here's what I wrote to myself. I said, while these levels are clearly out of the reference range, and I put in parentheses for fat toxic Americans, I have to wonder a little if there really is any problem. I have been a vegan for 11 years, mostly raw, and I feel fantastic. I exercise a lot. I was running 25 or so miles a week back then, going to the gym two or three times a week, and I felt fantastic. I said, I feel great. No indications of anemia or neurological problems. Those are the two major big issues that can come up with B12 deficiency. Nevertheless, I don't wanna end up with any problems, so I will see what I can do about this. And you may remember in the last episode, I talked about that some people on a raw food diet figure none of those reference ranges matter because they're based on sick, toxic people, so lab work doesn't count. And I think I shared that I think that's a big mistake because sometimes there's different reference ranges, but it doesn't mean you just don't count lab work. I wasn't too worried. I felt great. No signs of, of any other issues, but still, I wanted to make sure I didn't get into any trouble. Like a lot of you, I had heard things like, well, you can get B12 from sea vegetables. Spirulina contains B12. And other people would say, no, no, no. Spirulina contains B12 analogs and it'll fake your body into thinking you have B12, but it doesn't function like B12, so you could still be B12 deficient. And I'd read a lot of other things, and I thought to myself, being in inquisitive and curious and, and uh, being a new clinician, I thought, well, you know what? Here's my chance to experiment. 
and it took me a little while to come up with this, but my conclusion was I'm going to start by consuming spirulina because it's widely available, it's relatively inexpensive. I happen to like spirulina, and what I'm going to do is uh, get a baseline, get some baseline lab work, start taking spirulina, and then follow up and see what my lab work shows over time, and that'll prove if it worked for me or not. So I got some baseline lab work right before I started consuming spirulina. And what I had here was my B12 level was slightly different, but it was still between 150 and 200. And my methylmalonic acid, tiny bit different, but it was just about three still. So basically it was the same a few months later. And by the way, my friend had also seen in the first lab work that B12 was low, it's actually in the low hundreds, and methylmalonic acid was elevated a bit. What they decided to do was to take a, a whole food B complex formula that included B12. And then when we checked a few months later, their B12 went way up into the almost 500 and their methylmalonic acid came all the way down Problem solved, no issues. They didn't have any neurological or, or anemia issues either. Okay, so moving forward. So what I started to do is I started to consume one heaping tablespoon of spirulina, it was by the company Health Force, uh, daily for three months. One tablespoon every day for three months. So that was a total of three pounds of spirulina that I consumed. And uh, again, a bunch of interesting things here. But what happened was my B12 was still between 150 and, and 200. So B12 had not changed. My methylmalonic acid wasn't quite as elevated as before, but it was still elevated. So I thought, hmm, B12, methylmalonic acid went down a little bit. Maybe, maybe that's good. I don't know. Um, I also decided to get my homocysteine checked. That's another indicator of B12 status. It also checks for folic acid and vitamin B6. And if any of those three, B12, B6, or folic acid are low, homocysteine is going to go up. So if homocysteine is elevated, you're not sure which of the three nutrients are low, but if B12 is low, that can make homocysteine go up. So at the time, late 1990s at the lab I used, reference range for homocysteine was between 5 and 15. Mine was 17. Okay, so I hadn't checked it before, but it was high, methylmalonic acid was high, and B12 was still low after three pounds worth of spirulina over three months. So I continued because methylmalonic acid had come down a little bit. That seemed encouraging. So I tried spirulina again for several more months. And this time, all of a sudden, my B12 went up. It was 427. Whoa, B12 went way up. But how about the methylmalonic acid? You know what that was? At the time it was 2.3. So it was getting up near three again, about where I started, and it was well above the, um, the previous one. So in other words, if methylmalonic acid hadn't gone down, that increase in B12 didn't do my body any good. And most likely, I'm going to hypothesize that the batch of spirulina that I used after the second test probably contained a lot of vitamin B12 analogs. That would explain why B12 went up, but methylmalonic acid was still up instead of being low. Because if the B12 was active, methylmalonic acid would have gone down. This was about a year or so worth of spirulina. I was convinced spirulina didn't work. So don't count on spirulina for B12. Okay, so then I decided, well, what should I try next? Should I supplement? Because, you know, homocysteine has been high for a while. They can damage your blood vessels. But with very low cholesterol, optimum total to HDL ratio, low triglycerides, um, low indicators of inflammation, high antioxidant diet, I was not concerned too much about homocysteine damaging my blood vessels. At the same time, I didn't want this to drag out forever. So um, I was considering two different things at that point. I was considering chlorella, next logical step in sea vegetables to take. 
I was also considering a product called Vitamineral Green, made by Health Force Nutritionals. And I decided to go with Vitamineral Green. And my thought was, if this works, on the plus side, I'll be able to tell people, Vitamineral Green improved my vitamin B12 status. On the minus side, was that if it works, well, I won't know. Was it the chlorella in there? Was it the algae? Was it the grasses? I mean, it's a mix of all different types of green foods, including spirulina. If it works, I would be convinced it wasn't the spirulina. So I got some baseline lab work done again, right before I started consuming Vitamineral Green. What I did here is I got a urinary methylmalonic acid test done. And that is supposed to be less than 3.8 were their units. Mine was at 23. So too high, not good B12 status. But hemoglobin, hematocrit, red blood cell size, all those other things were, were good. So I hadn't developed any issues. So it was, it was just a sensitive test picking things up. And what I did is I started consuming two heaping tablespoons of Vitamineral Green every day. And it was version 3.55 back then. We're, we're going back to the late 90s. Actually, we're into the early 2000s now. This is 2002 now. And so um, what I found at the time was that my serum methylmalonic acid was 1.6. That's supposed to be less than 0.4. And again, the urinary methylmalonic acid was 23. That's supposed to be less than 3.8. My homocysteine was 15, okay? So I was just within the reference range, just kind of at the top end of the normal reference range. And some other interesting things on this test, my vitamin B12 at the time was about 250. So that's what we had, vitamin B12 of 250, upper end of normal range for homocysteine at 15, and elevated methylmalonic acid, both in the blood and in the urine. So what did I do? I started consuming Vitamineral Green, and one month after consuming Vitamineral Green, here's what we found. We found that my methylmalonic acid in the blood dropped to 0 0.3. This was the first time in these various experiments that methylmalonic acid was now at a normal level. So that was very encouraging to see. My homocysteine came down a little bit also. It went from uh, 15 or so before, one month later after Vitamineral Green, 13.6. So methylmalonic acid all the way down, homocysteine starting to come down a little bit, and vitamin B12 was starting to go up a little bit, it was just about at 300 now. So looking good, that made me want to continue. So I continued consuming Vitamineral Green. And let's see, let's see what my notes say here. This was uh, another, let's see, so the first was a month, about four weeks later, so now another six weeks after that, about 10 weeks now, of two tablespoons of Vitamineral Green daily. My B12 now was 418. So it B12 keeps going up. And my homocysteine came down even more. It came down to 10.5. So B12 is going up, homocysteine is coming down. That was later in 2002. And that's what we checked that time. So going a month forward, checked the urinary methylmalonic acid again, and that was still slightly elevated. It was only at six, it's supposed to be less than 3.8. So still a tiny bit elevated for urinary methylmalonic acid. And what did we see on the other lab work there? We saw that the, the blood methylmalonic acid was still slightly above normal. But, uh, but pretty darn close. Homocysteine kept coming down. Now homocysteine's at 10.2. So that was really good to see. And vitamin B12 this time was 333. So uh, not quite as high as before, but that looked really good. So then I continued. 
and follow it up for the last time, now about six months later, we're going into May of 2003, my urinary methylmalonic acid was still slightly above the reference range. Again, it was 6 instead of 3.8, so just sitting on top of the normal reference range. Going to the blood work, my vitamin B12 level was at 324, about the same as it was before. My blood methylmalonic acid was also just above the reference range. It's supposed to go from 90 to 279. Mine was at 607. And my homocysteine was now at 8.7. So basically, what happened from Vitamineral Green is methylmalonic acid first came all the way down then went slightly back up and consistently stayed just the tiniest bit high. Okay, I'd started out at 23 for urinary methylmalonic acid. It came down to 6. For homocysteine, I started out around 15. That consistently came down every single time I tested when, with consuming vitamin or green and ended up at 8.7, well within a healthy range and my vitamin B12 level went up from starting between 150 and 200 up to well into the 300 range. So that is significant improvement in vitamin B12 status. So that's great, but again, I don't know exactly which ingredient or which combinations of ingredients improved my vitamin B12 status. Now, in talking to the people over at Health Force, apparently, this experience is not unique. They've had some other people improve their vitamin B12 status with vitamin or green. And actually, I have to thank Health Forest. Near, near the end of this, I told them what I was doing, and they actually donated the vitamin or green, figuring it would be a good case history to see, and even uh, helped out with some of the lab work um, you know, later on in, in this series. So, so that was great. And in fact, in reviewing all this recently, it's made me think, that uh, what I'm considering doing is just stopping my B12 supplement that I have taken in recent years just to be on the safe side. Maybe I'll just stop and keep close track of my vitamin B12 status. Wait till methylmalonic acid and maybe homocysteine get elevated and B12 is low again. Not gonna let that go too far. In fact, in my next segment in this series, I'm gonna talk about what can happen when it does go too far, and it's very, very unfortunate. Luckily, these days, we have very sensitive indicators that can tell you if you're heading toward a problem before you ever get to a problem. So I'm thinking about just stopping all B12, anything that might improve my B12, until it gets low again, and then trying chlorella, and going through a series like I mentioned here in the past and seeing what happens with that. That would actually be fascinating. And if any of you are considering doing the same kind of thing, check out my consulting service. I'd be happy to uh, work with you and, and you know, analyze your lab work and, and help guide you in that regard. I think that would be fascinating. Hope you found this interesting. Don't count on spirulina for vitamin B12. Something about vitamin or green worked for me and it sounds like it has for others. Stay tuned for future updates. And I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it very useful.